Melbourne's David Screech Powell has always had a knack for remembering faces. Yeah, I've always been able to recognise family members, distant family members that I haven't seen, or school people, primary school kids growing up, like 20 years later. My wife's always picking up on me picking out people from the crowd. Um, I would walk past and I'd say, oh, well, that's so-and-so. She's always astounded as to the fact that I can pick people out. The faces, oh, I'll never forget, and it's an instant reaction to their face. It's like I have to think about, oh, that's that person. There you are. There, you know, what are you doing here? David never thought much of his handy skill until he stumbled upon a short online quiz. Uh, I came across a, a test that was a super recognizer test. I didn't know what it was at the time. Uh, I took the test and it was a face matching test. It was through acing this test that David ended up on the radar of University of New South Wales cognitive scientist Dr James Dunn, a lead researcher in the relatively new scientific field of face recognition. Super recognisers essentially are just people who are gifted at face recognition. So there are people just like ordinary people like you and I who seem to do better at remembering faces than most people and sometimes after really brief encounters. So we seem to think that super recognisers might make up about 1% to 2% of the population based on the current scientific understanding. We think it's largely genetic and not something that can be acquired through training or experience. And so we're trying to hope understand what makes them so special with the idea that it might help us understand expertise in general, what makes some people naturally gifted on some abilities than others. Through their free online test, UNSW have tracked down a large cohort of people just like David, allowing Dr Dunn to closely examine how super recognisers observe and recall faces. So using this technology, we can see the world through the eyes of a super recogniser. So we have this forward-facing camera that sees the world as they see it. And then on the inside, we have two infrared cameras that point towards the eye so we can see where they're looking in their environment. It seems that most people are drawn to the eyes, that people naturally spend a lot of time attending to the eyes. It's a very important cue for attention and social cue. But we also know that super recognisers also explore the face a little bit more than the ordinary person. So they seem to look at other features of the face. They might notice a very distinguished feature. For example, there might be a unique ears or a facial shape. And they seem to be tuning into those details a little bit better than most people as well. Some part of the brain, some part of me is always scanning for um, a familiar face in the crowd and every face is very different. Uh, some people have really thick eyebrows, some people have eye shapes that are different, ears, noses, noses slant to the side, lips. So everyone's face is very different and I guess my, the aspect of my ability is I pick up on those little subtle differences. Uh, so twins as well, twins we can spot the difference of twins. I don't see it as a superpower as such, I just see it as uh, something I can do every day, really. I don't, I don't look at it as like special, but it is cool to have because you can always spot the difference or see something before anyone else or react differently. David may not consider it a superpower, but people with his skill have been called on to help fight crime. Police forces in the UK and Germany have successfully used super recognisers to identify criminals in CCTV footage. Artificial intelligence technology for face recognition has come a long way in recent years. And so the accuracy on those measures have gotten really, really good. But they're only really good in very particular circumstances. So, for example, smart gate at the border, where you have a camera situated at a certain distance, you know the lighting conditions, that technology is very, very good under those circumstances and can make a large number of decisions highly accurately. But when you deal with situations with like CCDV footage or when you're out in the normal environment where lighting and angles and stuff aren't so good, in those situations, AI is not doing so well and super recognisers uh, seem to outperform those technology there. We've done a lot of testing. We've proven we can do what we can do. And I think, yeah, I'd love to. I'd love to be a part of any help, any help to find missing people or chase down criminals. Yeah, that'd be great.